Hey, everybody. This is Daniel Young, owner and founder of Adaptive Perspective. Uh, I've changed my why statement. I've used the same one for a while. Um, no, no pun in that per se. Um, it used to be, uh, I believe it's my purpose, my calling to help you identify your dreams and help you reach your financial freedom destination and maintain it so you can pass your wealth off to the next generation. And it's still that, but I've, I've whittled it down to it being a lot more concise. Um, so the new why statement is I help you identify your dreams and make them your reality, right? I help you identify what you want to do and then help you figure out how to do that. And contained in that simple statement is the same thing that I have been doing, uh, helping you realize your dreams and then helping you reach that, that level of financial independence that you want. So what I have today is my take on a meme. And this is not the standard closed in fund video, but it, it's gonna cover some additional closed in fund information. I recently read an article that encouraged its readers, uh, which I'm not a paid for member of this specific service, but it, it encouraged its readers to consider buying this specific uh, ETF. And it's a Vanguard fund. Yes, it, it actually is different than the... Uh, than a lot of the other stocks that I post about in that uh, they they typically don't go up this much in a year. Uh, so if inflation is at 4% and you're relying on the Fed to be correct in assessing inflation when they caused inflation. So if we're relying on their data to be correct and we're relying on them to accurately show that they're reducing inflation, and they have no idea how they caused inflation, then I think we're set up to fail. So if we assume that inflation is a standard 4%, uh, and maybe it's better in some situations than others, but in this current economy, if we assume inflation is at 4% and your overall stock is going up a percent a year and not paying you that much, like if, if you bought Apple and in 10 years, or say, if you bought Apple and in five years, it's 10% more than what it is today. Well, you're only gaining, you know, what, 2% a year? And inflation is 4% a year. So you're losing 2% off the bat. And if they're not paying you a dividend, you're losing even more. In this case, Vogue has actually gone up, I believe, 11% in the last year. So even with inflation, you're still gaining 7%, but they only pay you 1% for owning this company. So you've got to pay upwards of 260 a share right now, and you're only getting 1% back a year. That's not a really great reward. Really, that's a really uh, crappy reward for owning a company. And the traditional stock advice is that you're buying this fund over time. So as prices rise and fall, you're buying it on a dollar cost average. So sometimes it'll be higher, sometimes it'll be lower, it'll average out in the middle. On the flip side, the advice is when you sell it, you'll also be dollar cost averaging the sell. So you bought it, we'll say hi, your goal would be to sell it low, but the traditional stock advice on retirement is the, is the gradual sell off of your portfolio. So you don't have an advantage to know when you're going to have to sell it. Like you might have to sell it and take a loss compared to your overall dollar cost average amount. So I'm proposing a different way to retire. You can still stock up money in the stock market, but instead of relying on ETFs and single stocks and mutual funds, we're relying on closed end funds and dividends. Now, I'm going to compare VOOG, or what you see here, um, to a closed-in fund that we own. So I am going to talk closed-in funds. Uh, I'm not going to go through the whole backstory. Um, and 
all the setup of what exactly a closed fund is. You can look back at my past videos for that. Uh, but I want to compare VUD with what we can see that's in the portfolio and uh, the top 25 uh, of the, of what you can see. It, you'd say like a, you can dig into their websites and really look inside this portfolio. Uh, since I own it, they send me a quarterly report about what's in the portfolio that I've showed on past videos. I'm not going to show on this one. But if we look at what Morningstar has, Morningstar... Uh, a decent little free website. So it'll show you where the, the portfolios portfolios allocated. Or actually, let, before I get into this, let me let me go through some additional information. Um, so let me, let me set this up a little bit and get through some stuff that I have to say. So uh, if you've seen any of, my, any of my past videos, you understand our investment strategy using closed-end funds. Understanding that strategy is key uh, because I'm going to apply that same strategy to breaking down and filtering out these memes and this other advice. Uh, reminders, it's an unedited video. Uh, so who knows what you hear in the background as I film these in my house. Uh, currently, my cats are trolling, so maybe you'll see a cat. Uh, if, yeah, strategy, you'll see our closed-in funds to a degree. Uh, disclaimers. So see the description for the full disclaimer. What I'll say here, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm a financial strategist. Very different. I excel in strategy. And when we first came into contact with closed-end funds and we started reading about that, the mentality is not to rely on the value of your portfolio and gradually sell it off. The the strategy is to still build your portfolio, but to rely on dividends, sell off the, the funds that don't perform well, but keep your portfolio in check, like keep your portfolio in the account generating dividends and then live and supplement your retirement based off those dividends. So as I do these videos, my goal is not to trash people. I'm just going to use our lens and our filter to call out crappy stuff and bad advice. Uh, but I'm not going to outright trash and slander people. Uh, I'm I'm just interested in separating good advice from bad advice because none of us want bad advice. So there, there's really no scripting to this. It's just a rough review of the in comparison of these two funds. I've done some prep work. I'll have I'll show a uh, a spreadsheet for you to look at. It's not just going to be me talking about stuff. I'm a visual person. I like to display things visually. Um. Uh, so let's look at this some more. So let me go back to this Vogue screen and share that screen. So you can see how they're invested overall. And it'll show you the company overall of what they hold. And it'll show you the top 25 funds. Right. So you can pause the video and read it. I'm going to pause a little bit as I click between pages. So if we go back to that first page and look at this breakdown, this is a closed-in fund that we own. Uh, and I'm going to show you their portfolio in the mashup. So it's not exactly a straight comparison, right? Vogue is invested in the U.S. heavily. Liberty is primarily invested in the U.S. It's got some non-U.S. equity and just general cash on it. We look at how the portfolios are spread, right? So percentage-wise, you've got two, ten, six, and on this side, right? In comparison, two, ten, six financial services. Uh, I mean, I like how they're invested, to be honest. Uh, real estate, not much. Communications, so you got seven, six, four, right? Seven, six, four. That's kind of comparable. Technology, so you got 37,616, 37,616, somewhat comparable, right? Not exactly the same, but very similar. So we go back to that top 10 of that top 25 company. So as you look at this one, Apple, Microsoft, NVIDIA, Alphabet, or Google, 
Tesla, more Google, Amazon, United Health, Exxon Mobil, uh, Visa, Eli Lilly, Mastercard, Chevron, Merck, J and J, Abvi, Pepsi. They have Coca Cola at the end, I believe. Broadcom, Pfizer. So we come up over to Liberty, and you've got very similar company structure. Now they're invested slightly differently, right? It's a different ranking. Microsoft, United, Amazon, Google, Visa, NVIDIA, slightly different structure, right? Not exactly the same, but very similar. Now I reference this because we're gonna compare the numbers. So here's the fund recommended pays quarterly. As of today, the opening amount was just shy of 255. This information does not apply to ETFs and single stocks. And if it does, it's extremely hidden and buried. Uh, current dividend to share. So that dividend of one share. If you invested 10 grand, normally I compare things with $1,000 invested. But with that being so high, I made it 10000 So at $10,000 invested, you could buy 39 whole shares of this fund, which would give you $109 a year or just more than 1% yield. If we did the same thing with USA, it still pays quarterly, but here's the cost versus the overall value. It's currently on discount. And USA's historical discount sits around five. Their five-year discount sits around 1.1. Uh, and right now, it's it's better than the historical discount in regards to that five years. Like, and it's more than double the historical discount in the five years. So if you want to know more about the discount and how that works, look at my past videos. So the dividend to share. So if a 16 cents per share quarterly, right, 64 cents a year, it doesn't look like it would perform better. But since it's cheaper... And it still gives us the same same amount of access. We get a lot more shares, which means we get a lot more money. So we get six sixteen hundred and thirty one whole shares off that ten grand investment, which means we get all we get over a thousand dollars in dividends annually, which means our yield goes up to ten percent or more right now. So. If we ever sold the funds, right, it, the pricing at the end of the day doesn't exactly matter so long as they can pay the dividends, right? Now, if you're selling your portfolio, the price matters. But if you have no plans to sell your portfolio, the day-to-day -day fluctuation and the year-to-year -year fluctuations don't, per, don't matter per se. The, everybody wants to increase their value every year. Right. But if we want to live off our dividends, so as that portfolio does this with whatever craziness is happening in the economy and whatever stupid stuff the Federal Reserve is doing, as it does this, your dividends pay. Right. So if you're selling and you have to sell it low, that's not helpful. But if the price is low and you're still and you're still getting that fantastic dividend then you're still getting that fantastic dividend. And that's the difference of what closed-end funds can do. Now, the goal is that, yes, they they gain value, right? Uh, but with the strategy twisted just a little bit, so yes, cost matters, sell price matters, right? Overall growth matters. All of that's embedded in the system. But what we're strategically looking at is when we can buy these at historical discounts, right? So when the discounts are, are double or even triple, as some, as some funds are right now, that those historical discount levels, so you buy them exceedingly cheap, you get this crazy dividend. I mean, the average across 433 funds right now is, is close to 9% dividend, meaning some pay, pay away, some pay a lot more and some pay none. But the going average is close to 9%, 8.5%, but 9%. And you pick up the funds cheap, 
they consistently pay the dividends. And if the fund escalates, like just for whatever's in season in the economy, if it goes up and it, it hits 20% in a year or two and you want to sell it, great. You sell it and you swing that money into the next thing, right? Or if you want to just lock in your amount and dollar cost the amount based upon that historical discount, every time it's historically low, then you would buy more and you would dollar cost it based on your average. So if your average for USA is $7, right? And currently it's 613 or as of this morning, it was 613 and it's more than double the historical discount. So you scoop up another batch of shares. Well, when the discount, when the discount closes and goes away, now you're riding that high, right? And now it's in premium. Now it's selling more. It's selling for more than it's worth. You're waiting for when it drops back off and sells for double that historical discount again. And when it meets your buy-in price, if it's equal to or lower, then you're continually lowering the cost, right? Continually lowering, lowering the overall value of that dollar cost average amount. But you're also scooping up the fund when it when it's an advantage to you. S single entities, ETFs, don't go on discount. Now they sell for less, but the share number in general never gets impacted. Like you, you can truly snag closed in funds for discounts, right? And then there are some funds that where you can pay premium for, like you would pay more than what they're actually worth. That doesn't serve us. So our strategy is to scoop up discounts when they're at historical levels, beating historical levels, doubling their historical levels, scoop them up cheap, dollar cost them against what we've already paid for, right? And as the price does this, we just get a steady dividend. And then if, if our kids want to sell, then they can sell. But all the while, it pays us that steady dividend. So very different strategy but I, something very worth your attention and something you should consider. So uh, honestly, that's all I got. So I could browbeat, the, I mean, I could browbeat closed in funds over ETFs and single stocks and mutual funds, but I'm not going to do that. So if you like the content, so consider subscribing to my channel and then head over to Facebook where you can find my group there called Navigate Your Finances. Uh, that information will be in the description. Uh, I talk about earned income and passive income on Facebook, and I talk about portfolio income and financial meme strategy on YouTube. So regardless of what you're up to, regardless of your financial situation, if you don't have a strategy, you need to know that strategy before you invest, right? And as you develop your strategy and as you develop your plan, you will begin to captain your ship. So you are the captain of your ship. You have the power to change your life and your financial and your financial future. Many people will offer to help you, but only you can make the choice to do it. You need to get better at filtering out all this advice, which I completely realize this video falls into that internet financial advice. So you need to get better at sifting out financial advice and seeing who's offering you an actual effective winning strategy and who's just showing you something pretty. So Many people will offer to help you, but only you can make the choice to do it. Make it happen. Shock your world. This is Daniel Young signing off. I will see you all on another video. Uh, if you want to connect with me, please find me on Facebook. That is the easiest way to connect with me. Uh, if you can leave. You can, by all means, leave a comment on the video. But if you want to chat and have a conversation and interact, please come find me on Facebook. So have a great day. Bye-bye.